So our topic for tonight is about uh, a man after God's own heart with King David, of course, but this time as a man of war. I was thinking, um, marami naman tayong um, wars going on, so it would be good for us to meditate on how does a man after God's own heart um, live as a man of war? Paano siya? Because uh, you know that uh, God declared that uh, David was after his own heart. Na itong taong to, sabi ni God, mahal na mahal ako, no? pursuing my heart. And yet, we know that uh, he, God used David for war and um that is to defeat the enemies of the the those who are uh, declaring war against Israel so tonight we're going to check the key to David's victories a man after God's own heart <clears throat> that is the key to victory the bible calls David a man after God's own heart twice the first time was in the Old Testament. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. The second time was in the New Testament. God made David their king. So it was God who anointed David. And God testified concerning him and said, I have found David a man after my own heart. And he will do everything i want him to do praise god so titingnan natin um kung ano ang key to david's victories how did david win his wars that's the important thing david fought 66 wars and he lost none lahat panalo 100%. Diba? Yung iba, uh, you know, like uh, even in boxing, even Manny Pacquiao, he did not win everything. Pero ito si David, he won all the battles. And we want to win our battles. And the battles that we are fighting, tayong mga uh, Christians, it's not just uh, uh, hold on. It's not just, uh, it, when we talk about wars, it's not just Ukraine and Russia. We are also fighting our own personal battles, like um, sickness. We're fighting cancer. We're fighting our re relationship battles. Or ano -ano, no? Even poverty. So let's see. We, um, it's my prayer that because we want to be victorious, what is the key to David's success, David's uh, victories? And we want the same victory. Let me... Um. Okay, here we have um, David, a man after God's own heart, and how to fight our battles like David. Number one, there are three points. The first principle is, like David, we fight under the anointing. We had a very powerful class with Pastor Chris last Saturday about the anointing the mantle, etc. And uh, as I was listening to her, I was thinking, parang, kamuk, parang magkapareho no, ng, ng, nitong point neto, this principle. Anyway, how do you fight your battle? What is your battle right now? Think about it. And how do you fight under the anointing? Uh, David was 15 years old and was anointed by Samuel 
the prophet Samuel to be Israel's future king. And we know that David fought under the anointing. The Lord said to Samuel, you are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This, David, is the one. So, wow, pinili talaga siya. And I believe pinili din tayong lahat ng Panginoon. So this is a what you call a twofold anointing. Verse 13, Samuel took the horn of oil, may, ganun, ano, may oil, and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from the day, that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. There are two kinds of anointing, no? the outward and the inward. Outwardly, Prophet Samuel ceremonially anointed David with oil to confirm his position as king in front of witnesses. Inwardly, the Holy Spirit anointed David with power. Mga kapatid, kuminsan, uh, marami tayong ano, eh, ceremonias. If, and uh, if you want a ceremony, i-pray over nyo naman ako or kung ano-ano, i-baptize nyo, i-ano, kung ano yung ceremonias. Eh, kahit na may oil, that is just the outward. And you know why? You have to have an outward anointing for your position so that there will be witnesses. Parang sinasabi, oh, sa harap ninyo, this will be the future king. Okay? And, but if, it, but if the inward anointing does not happen, then it is powerless because it is the spirit of the Lord that will give power to that anointing. And so, the prophet in tao nag anoint uh, in front of witnesses as part of a ceremony. But the Holy Spirit is actually anointing inside of us with power. In Win Watch, you are anointed to be a prayer warrior. You have been officially, the moment you, you join, because we, we invited you to join the first uh, 30 minutes, the, the second portion no, in, from 6.15 to 6.30, that is for World Watch, and you're invited to pray, that means you have been anointed ceremonially and with power to pray for the world and for the nation. And second, the, the OSG teachers were also anointed as OSG teachers. So they were anointed outwardly in front of witnesses. It was confirmed, the position. And the inward, inwardly, they were anointed by the Holy Spirit with power. So that's how we fight the anointing. That's why um, I am again inviting you. I am reiterating the baptism of the Holy Spirit the spirit baptism, that is the inward anointing with power. So kung hindi pa kayo na nakaka-experience ng baptism with the spirit, please stay for uh, another five minutes after we watch, lalo na first timers, and you will receive that anointing, that inward anointing that the Holy Spirit will do for you. Amen? And the mga iba na hindi naman first timer, but uh, if you have been here for uh, so long na hindi pa na experience then uh, please uh, 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 attend. Please attend. Okay, let me share again my... Now, like I said, we fight under the anointing. 
and God anoints us when he assigns us. Let us not fight our wars, our prayer wars outside of God's anointing. That's why, ang dami sa inyo mga may sakit. Hindi nyo ba napapansin laging sasabihin sa inyo ni Pastor Esther, attend ka ng prayer healing, healing room. Punta ka sa healing room. Punta ka sa healing room. Because there is an anointing there that was assigned. The anointing, of course you can pray outside. But then um, there is also an anointing, a heavy anointing within. Ceremonially, outwardly, in front of witnesses, it has been declared the healing room will be for healing. And um, inwardly, by faith, those who come will receive that anointing. God's purpose for our anointing is for us to do good, whatever is our assignment. In Wind Watch and World Watch, you and now the Philippine Watch, you are anointed and assigned to be a prayer warrior. That means every prayer you utter is anointed and powerful. You have been assigned. You have been anointed and assigned. So I really I'm, I'm so excited every time you pray. Sabi ko, Lord, just in case nagpe-pray, pray lang sila. Lord, hindi nila alam yung power nila. I pray, oh God, to, to receive their faith. Now, every time you pray, ex exercise your faith because you have been anointed and assigned to pray powerfully. See, in Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And yet the ceremonial anointing happened where? The, I'm sure you know where. It happened in the Jordan River when Jesus was baptized with water by John the Baptist. That was the ceremonial, the outward anointing. But then the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dog and the Holy Spirit power came upon him. That was the inward anointing. And Jesus went around doing good healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. This is so interesting. Uh, you would think, sasabihin, healing all who were sick. Healing all who were under the power of the devil. Sickness comes from the devil. Okay, you might say, ay, hindi, syempre, ay, kung sinipon ka, dahil careless ka, but, uh, don't want to want the, the devil will take advantage. If you if you got sick and it began with a your carelessness, maging careless ka ganito kaya tumaas yung blood pressure mo. Walang it wasn't caused by the devil, but you know if you don't know how to pray, he will take advantage of that sickness, and he his power will flow. Through that sickness, if we don't know how to pray in the anointing, under the anointing. Kaya importante na okay lang. Eh, nagpa-pray naman ako, marunong na ako pray Meron pang iba, secret prayer lang to. How mo yung sasabihin? Dalawa lang, tatlo lang. I love it in Wind Watch. Dapat na dito tayo nagpa-pray, no? Dahil um, at, uh, there are 200 plus of us. Can you imagine that power, no? And so, the, this kind of prayer for healing is delivering the people from sickness that is under the power of the devil. So I pray that, uh, yes, exponential and corporate prayer. So I take advantage of the healing wounds when you are sick. Also, know God's appointed time for you. You may have been anointed and assigned, but you need to know your appointed time. Do not grab the position that was not appointed to you. Na, oh, anointed now. Gan ko magpray dun sa World Watch. Pagdating sa church mo, ako, ako magpe-pray. Eh, hindi ka naman tinatawag. Hindi ka naman ina-appoint ng iyong pastor. Ako na mag-lead sa prayer meeting. Hindi ka naman ina-appoint. Hintayin mo. Amen. 
David was anointed and assigned to be the king of Israel, but the appointed time of coronation happened after 15 years passed. Only after the appointed king Saul died. At the time that David was anointed, there was a king who was appointed by God, King Saul. And habang nakaupo yung appointed king, kahit anong lakas ng anointing mo, kahit na assigned ka, you have to wait for the appointed time. So maybe sometimes we're discouraged ng tagal-tagal na na, na, na impasyente na ako, gusto ko na mag-take over, ako na lang sana. Di ba? But uh, there is an appointed time. You know, uh, I was anointed in my home church 30 three years ago, uh, to be the Bible teacher for the young people. So, kinuha nila ako, pwede ba ikaw yung uh, youth uh, Bible teacher? And so, okay. And only after eight years was I appointed as associate pastor. So, for eight years, Bible teacher lang ako na mga yan. Sila Pastor Bernie, sila Pastor Chris, sila Pastor Golda, Pastor Esther. Yan, mga yan. Um, Bible, ano lang kami, nagtutun, and prayer, and mga prayer warriors. But I had no, uh, no appointment as a pastor. And then, after eight years, uh, I was, so hindi ako nakikialam sa pastoral ministry. Kahit na marami akong mga suggestion, marami akong alam, marami akong ayaw ko nito, dapat ganito. I shut my mouth. Why? Because I'm not appointed. After eight years, I was appointed as associate pastor. So we had a senior pastor, and we had I was the associate pastor. There was the two of us. Two of us palam yun. And then uh, what happened was after three years of being associate pastor, three more years, then I became the senior pastor. And as senior pastor, I could appoint. So I appointed Pastor Bernie to take my place. So hintayin mo yung appointment. God's appointed time for you. Okay? No matter how thick your anointing is, don't grab any position. Even if you were assigned, ikaw magiging ganito, ikaw magiging ganyan. Pero hintayin mo yung appoint. That's how... You fight your battle. That's how to win. That's how the key to victory. Waiting. Because pag uunahan mo ang Panginoon, papalayasin ka lang dun sa simba mo, aawayin ka nila, walang mangyayari sa'yo. You will never get to the uh, leader, you, you will never get a leadership position because the appointed pastor will not allow it. <laughs> Galit sa'yo eh, di ba? So do not grab the position that is not yet yours. And we fight with the uh, we fight under the anointing. Dito sabi, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. Look at this, 1 Samuel 24, verse 4. The man said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept, so sabi ng mga tauhan niya, ito na, yun na yung enemy mo, si King Saul, gusto kang patayin. Nandiyan na siya, oh. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's, Saul's robe. Hindi, hindi pa niya pinatay, no? Afterward, David was conscience-stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. You can bring your anointing wherever you are assigned, but you have to wait for the appointed time. Your appointment into the top position before you act out your anointing. Nakakatawa nga, kami ni Pastor Esther, you know, we are members of a church. We have been members of this church for almost 10 years. And nobody is using us as uh, 
as a Bible teacher, as a, nobody's using Pastor Esther as a prophet. Wala, doon lang kami sa background, patingin-tingin, pakinig, pakinig ng narikikinig. Ganyan. Why? We're not appointed. We're nothing. We're nobody. We are anointed. We are assigned to LGI. You see, so you wait for your appointment. The second principle is we fight with the weapon of intimacy. This is how we win. So si David, hari yan, ano? Mga, mga, ang mga labanan nila, army to army. But he won because he was after God's own heart. He was adoring, inquiring, praying to God. The weapon of intimacy with God. So how did he adore God? Look at Psalm 63 verse 1. Oh God of my life. Yeah, ganyan, yung mga prayers natin, ganyan. Oh God of my life, I'm love sick for you. In this weary wilderness, I thirst with the deepest longings to love you more. With cravings in my heart that I can that cannot be described. Such yearning grips my soul for you, my God. You want to win your battles? This is the way. Adoring, intimate. And imagine he wrote this song. He was in danger of death in the hands of his enemy at that time. Oh, ano? Eto na. Army. Can you imagine si Putin or Zelensky? No? Nasa gera. Oh, God of my life. I'm love sick for you. Eh, malalalo ka talaga. Kaya naman palang walang, walang talo sa gera. Kung marunong lang talaga, no? Itong mga ano natin. If they can only pray like David, the man after God's own heart, that's the way to win your battles. How adoring are we when we pray? Oh Lord God, napaka napaka formal. So we will want to pray. Oh God of my life, I'm love sick for you. Deepest longing to love you more. Na imagine ko dito si Pastor Kawe. <laughs> Pastor Kagan yung ka magpray no, <laughs> and then this was written during uh, David's escape from the enemy. Uh, look at this inquiring. Uh, let me just skip that. Okay, there are nine inquiries of David in the midst of war. Sa propeta siya pumupunta yan ng weapon niya nagtatanong inquiring. In First Samuel twenty three verse six it says. Now, Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, uh, had brought the ephod, sorry, P-H-M, ephod down with him when he fled to David at Kela. Now, Abiathar was a priest and a prophet. And uh, suot-suot ng propeta, yung ephod, over the chest, parang uh, ano yun, role, uh, ceremonial attire. Pag nagpapa-WK, dapat may ephod yata tayo pag nagpapa-WK. Pastor Esther, pag tinatawagan ka, dapat may ephod ka. <laughs> anyway, ganun sila noon. Ano. So, dala-dala niya yun. Kahit saan sa gera. Bakit? Siya yung propeta ni David. Sa kanya siya nagpapa-WK. Parang tayo, kay, ano yan, nandiyan sila Pastor Chris, papa-WK tayo. So, we fight with this kind of weapon of Eh, ang intimate lang ang pwedeng ganyan. First Samuel, first weapon, there are nine. No? Let me read it quickly. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, Go, attack the Philistines and save Kayla. Okay, lusod, mga kaibigan. Sabi ng WK, yes. Number two, once again, David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Kila, for I'm going to give the Philistines into your hand. Okay, na naman. Pero kita niyo na, kahit na nanalo si David dito, tanong uli siya, bawat gera. <laughs> then in, David said, ibang ano naman to, no? Uh, Lord God of Israel, your servant has definitely heard that Saul plans to come to Kila and destroy the town on account of me. Nakululusubin kami, Lord. Will the citizens of Kayla surrender me? Naku, baka naman ibigay ako kay Saul. Huh? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? 
Lord God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will. Again, David asked, will the citizens of Kayla surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, they will. So, tumaka sila. Sabi, ibibitray ba ka kami? Oo, oo, sabi ng Panginoon. Kaya, hindi sila natalo dahil nakatakas sila. Amen? And then, <clears throat> When, then David said, another instance, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my hand into the uh, it, me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver you. I think this is the same. Okay. 30, verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? God, pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. In the course, another in the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah? He asked. The Lord said, Go up, David asked. Where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. Grabe, tanong lang ng WK, lang ng WK. Another instance, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Iba naman ng kaaway na. Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. And then another, So David inquired of the Lord again, and he answered, Do not go straight up, sabi ni God, but circle around them. Ayan, strategy, no? Circle around behind them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, Move quickly because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as the Lord commanded him and he struck down the Philistines all the way from beyond. You want to win your battles? Inquire of the Lord. Tingnan nyo naman nga, ano? WK na strategy. During the rain, yes, thank you for the breakthrough moon, sabi ni Pastor Gurley, where we can inquire. During the reign of David, there was a famine for three successive years. So David sought the face of the Lord. And the Lord said, it is on account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. So sabi, bakit nangyayari ito? Ganyan. Kasi inexplain ni God. And uh, so whatever it is, what happened was that they were able to remedy. Naayos nila lahat. Kaya nawala na yung famine. Okay, so yung isa, in, uh, adoration. Ito naman, inquiring of God. Ito naman, praying. So this is David hiding from his enemies alone in a cave. And this is the psalm that he wrote, Psalm 13. He said, when life feels like an endless struggle, like si David, ito yung prayer niya. How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? Tingnan nyo naman, no? Parang bata, parang baby. Lord, will you forget me? Yan, hari. No, hari and warrior. Yan ang pumatay kay Goliath. Yan ang pumatay. 60, ano, ilang battles yun? 66 ba yun? Na panalo lahat. Nandun sa kaligitnaan ng gera, na-trap siya. Na-trap siya sa cave. No? So, nandun yung mga enemies sa labas. And he was alone. Will you forget me? That was when, when you, I feel like, when you feel like you have lost God's blessing, how long will you hide your face from me? Pray ko lang, pray, para hindi ka sumasagot. And then, sa, when your mind seems so troubled, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And day after day, have sorrow in my heart. Matagal siya dun din, eh, no? And then he's now beginning to doubt the plan of God. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Gano katagal, Lord, ako maghihintay. Mananalo sila. And then this is what I saw, no? yung sasagot ni God. But it's the same song, no? Psalm 13, lahat to, Psalm 13, verse 3. Sabi ni God, look on me and answer. Lord, my God, give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. So this is, sabi ni David, well, hey, God, look at me. Lord, 
Dito, dito ang tingin. Huwag ka muna mag-answer ng prayer dyan ni ano. Kung sino ni so and so. Ako, ako muna. Pay attention, Lord. Sabi niya, look on me. Answer. Explain to me. Sabi. Give light to my eyes. Explain mo kung ano nangyayari. Save me. Turn. So, an intimate person, para manalo ka, turn and talk to God the way David was talking. Kailangan insist ka. Then, and then, weeping will turn to worship. Sabi ni David, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. It turned out, mga kapatid, that David's friends finally found him in the cave of darkness and utter depression and rescued him. Thanks be to God for his unfailing love. Amen? So meanwhile, in dark, ang ginawa na, he didn't waste his time getting scared. He just, he, he just prayed the way he talks to God. Look on me and answer. Come on, Lord. Taga-taga naman. Ex explain mo. Explain mo, Lord. Explain mo sa akin. Bakit nangyayari to? And last principle, a man after God's own heart. How we fight our battles. Number three, we fight under the lordship of God. Yan ang nangyari kay King David. The key to David's victories, nagpasakop siya. He fought under the lordship of God. Hindi yung WK, papa WK, hindi ka naman nagpapasakop. Pasakop ka. Okay, come to God with great humility when we sin. Now, our hero committed the worst sin ever. Siguro walang ganun sa atin. Adultery na, may murder pa. No? Nag-adultery siya kay Bathsheba and pinapatay niya yung asawa ni Bathsheba. Imagine, para mapangasawa niya, mapakasalan niya si Bathsheba. And so, God was so angry at him and used the prophet Nathan. Sabihin mo kay David, Galit na galit ako sa kanya and nakakatakot pag nagalit si God. And this is what he did. This is the psalm. No? Sabi niya, come to God. This is what we should do. Come to God, the only one who truly loves you. Tingnan niyo sabi niya, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. When we sin, come near to God. He's the only one who truly loves you. Only God can blot out your sin as if they never happen. Alam niyo ba yun? Sabi, ito, tuloy-tuloy yung kanyang uh, psalm. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from sin. Lord, delete, erase. Ayun ang sabi, wash away my sin. Marunong mag-pray pag nag -sin. And then the next verse, identify your sins. Ah, ano yung sin mo? Sigurado ka ba? Alam mo ba? Sabi niya, I know. I know my transgressions. And my sin is always before me. Lord, alam na alam ko. Alam na alam ko. Grabe ang aking kasalanan, Panginoon. And accept the verdict and the judgments against you. Wag kang, eh kasi, eh kasi, eh kasi, aminin. Sabi ni David, against you, you only have I sinned. Against you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Alam ko, galit ka sa akin. Tama lang, Panginoon, na magalit ka. Tama lang. And then, he, he ends his Psalm, the Psalm 51. A prayer of a broken spirit and a contrite heart will lead us to victory. This is what it, God meant, a man after my own heart. He hungered for a pure heart. Create in me a pure heart, O Lord. Baguhin mo na ako. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. And be afraid of separating from God. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Si God ang hindi humihiwalay eh. Ikaw ang hihiwalay, di ba? Huwag kang hihiwalay kay God. 
So that's the prayer of David. Long for the joy of being with God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, oh God. Grabe, feel na feel. Believe that God will never despise this prayer. Ang sabi niya, my sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit. Ang sabi niya, I know a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Amen? Hindi, hindi makakahindi. Ang Panginoon, if you're so broken. Now, mga kapatid, this is why I am against. Yung mga, ah, ako nagpe-pray naman ako eh. Sa, pag, yung iba pa, na, pag nasa banyo ako, nagpe-pray ako. O kaya, uh, pagka ano, ano uh, kasi late na ako, nagpe-pray ako pag nasa bus. O pag nasa kotse, habang nagdadra. Oh my gosh, you cannot pray for victory. Like, like David did. You don't pray. You're not fighting under the Lordship of God. Yung mga prayer na ganun, don't, don't ever pray that way. Pag uwi mo, tsaka ka na lang mag-pray. Huwag ka magpe-pray sa bas. No? I mean, nang ganito, no? if you want serious home prayer. So that, I, I want to end uh, with, ano, ano man nangyari kay David? He won all his wars. How did he die? Did he did he die in the in the war? Never. No, he he died a ripe old age, the death of a man after God's own heart. First Kings chapter two verse two. When the time drew near for David to die, he was on his deathbed and he gave a charge to Solomon his son. Tawagin si Solomon. And he said, Anak, I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him. Keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go, and that the Lord may keep his promise to me. The promise of God to David is this. If your descendants watch how they live and if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. And in verse 10, then David rested with his ancestors, was buried in the city of David. He reigned 40 years over Israel, seven years in Hebron and 30 years in Jerusalem for a total of 40 years. And Solomon, the son, sat on the throne of his father, David, and his rule was firmly established. Walang nag-question. Walang nag-deny. So even the next generation was secured by a man. Was he perfect? No. Nakita natin yung sikat. Marunong lang siya. Anong marunong siya? Marunong siya mag-fight under the anointing? Marunong siya mag-fight with the weapon of adoration, WK, and prayer, intimate, intimate prayers? And he knows how to fight under the Lordship of God. Yes, Pastor Mem, what a beautiful uh, way to die. And you know, I think I shared it with others, but me, I really have a special request to God. Lord, I want to die uh, glorifying you. Ayoko na yung mamatay ako na hindi nakaka-glorify, no? And kinuntrata ko si Pastor Esther. Pastor Esther, sasabihin mo sa akin kung may pakita sa si God. Kung malapit na ako para, para makapaghanda. Amen? Para matapos ko yung aking lahat ng mga gagawin. You may be a king or a poor person. Kahit na mayaman ka, mahirap ka, young or old, no matter what your status in life is, we are all warriors. Lahat tayo may war. But all of us can win our battles. He, he won because he was after God, God's own heart. 66 battles, 66 wars, at walang talo. Tama ba yun? Uh, nasan yun? There, he won 66 battles and he did not 
lose a single one. And this is God's promise. I will never hold your sins against you. The worst sinner, I think, no? Worse than Paul. Somebody nag-adultery, tapos pin murderer. Pinapatay pa niya yung... Uh, look at verse 6 in Romans 4. Even King David himself speaks to us. Kinakausap po kayo ni Dave, King David regarding the complete wholeness that comes inside a person when God's powerful declaration of righteousness is heard over our life. Apart from our works, God's work is enough. And this is the testimony of David, mga kapatid. What happy fulfillment is ahead for those whose rebellion has been forgiven and whose sins are covered by blood. What happy progress comes to them when they hear the Lord speak over them. I will never hold your sins against you. Hallelujah, mga kapatid. The King David anointing. Our sins will never be taken against us because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen.